Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of The DVC Show. Coming up, we're going to take your questions from Facebook and answer them if we feel like. Coming up next. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome. Coming to you from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined in the studio this week by my good friends from DBC Resale Market, Sue Saunders. Hi, Pete. Uh, the Sales and Marketing Director of DBC Rental Store, Ms. Carrie McPherson. Hi, everybody. And, of course, the lovely and talented Amy Krieger. <laughs> Do you forget? No. Hello. And Paul. Yeah, I'm, I'm not lovely or talented. <laughs> yes, you are, Paul. You're a pretty girl, pretty girl. Um, and of course, our producer this week, as always, Corey Fiascanaro. Welcome home. And welcome to you. Welcome. Hope you're having a good Monday. Um, hopefully we make your Monday a little brighter. Or not. I don't know. Um, but uh, we thought we'd do another Q&A show. You guys seem to like it when we, when we do that. So we put... Uh, Put the call out on our DVC Fan Facebook group, which you should absolutely go and check out. We'll have a link down in the description below if you'd like to like to join us over there. Yeah. Um, and uh, Fiasco went through and curated the questions. So if your question was not answered in this, it's my fault. If your question was not answered, it was because it was a stupid question. I'm kidding. There are no stupid questions. But yes, there are. Um, all right, so we'll start with the first one. Uh, you did not uh, include anyone's names here, so I have no idea who asked these questions. Anonymous. Uh, good help. Good help is hard to find. <laughs> um, hypothetically, if the price per point and annual dues were the same for all DBC properties, but you could only buy 150 points at one resort, mm -hmm. which resort would you choose? I'm going to start with you. <laughs> You're looking at me. <laughs> That's such a, it's a great question it and is. it's a hard question. 150 points, only one, <clears throat> one DVC resort. I, I think I have to go with Copper Creek and, and here's why. Copper Creek to me takes me to a completely different place. I live in Central Florida. I'm from New England. I love the mountains. I love kind of that whole like Christmassy sort of log cabin vibe. I also love that it's a boat ride away from the Magic Kingdom, which is then a, a monorail ride away to Epcot. But it feels tucked back to me. You know, mm. there's walking trails. I enjoy the food and beverage locations over there. I enjoy the rooms over there as well. Um, and then personally, I sold Copper Creek when I was a DVC guide. So it was my first resort that had opened when I was on that team. And so I felt like I had a little bit of some ownership there as well. So I think if I had to only pick one, 150 points, it would be that. And I think I would do a little probably bank and borrow from time to time and do the one bedroom or two bedroom if I couldn't afford to do the cabin. But if you can afford to do the cabin, that's my other reason as well, because I just think that cabin is fabulous. OK, yeah. and we're going to come to Sue next. But it, it dawned on me that uh, you were on our live show last week. Well, for them, it's last week. For us, it's five minutes ago. <laughs> um, and I I forgot to like properly introduce you now you know of course you work <laughs> with the uh, dvc resale market but you have an interesting history yes p i um my husband and i bought dvc the first day it went on sale to the public so we wow. bought in october of 1991 with hard hats on and the only model we could see was in building 14 and it was a two bedroom and they were still constructing it so we stood there with our hard, hard hats on and looked at it and said, yep, we want to do this. So we've been DVC members for 30 years. <clears throat> wow. I think that's even longer than Rob Lindsay. <laughs> um, so that's, that's awesome. Um, and obviously no regrets. Absolutely none. It, it's, um, it's given honeymoons to some of the nieces and nephews, vacations to both sides of the family. We've done things that we could never, ever think of doing in our whole lifetime. And then at some point, I guess you decided to go work 
for DVC? Yep. Um, I started off with uh, Disney in a different capacity as an organization development consultant. And um, while I was working for them on that, I worked on a project for DVC. One thing led to another. When they found out I was a founding member, they inquired as to why I wasn't selling for them. So I went, got my license, and um, applied twice before I was accepted. Well, that sounds like DVC. Why aren't you working for us? Okay, I'll come work for you. No. No, not yet. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't time. It wasn't time. And, uh, and how long have you been with uh, DVC Resale Market? Um, I've been with DVC Resale Market since uh, 2015. Wow. Awesome. So almost the start. So if you're looking to buy a resale, reach out to Sue. She'll be more than happy to help you. And God knows woman knows dvc oh love it <laughs> i mean like literally like from the birth yes yeah. you yes. were the midwife yep <laughs> we, we watched it grow and uh it was just a, a fantastic from buying the vacation club which was old key west at the time was the vacation club and being told we're only building phase one that's it that's all you're buying you can't use your points anyplace else just phase one that was it wow that's what we bought into Wow. But now, I mean, you can use those points. Oh, yeah. Anywhere. Any place. Yeah. Any place, which okay. is great. So, so maybe some weird contract. <laughs> in the beginning. And I, I got to ask, how much How much per point? $51 oh per my point. Oh, my God. <laughs> you had to ask. Oh but but you had to buy 230 That was the minimum mm. you could buy. Still. I know. Right. I mean, yeah. talk about a good investment. Oh, yeah. Very good. Talk about a good investment. Wow. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I'm really happy to have you here. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, what, which resort, if you could add these uh, restrictions? That's a hard one, too. Um, part of my heart goes with Old Key West because the rooms there are big. The points go about the furthest with their point charts, and it's my home. But my other part of my heart goes to Polynesian. Mm -hmm. I love the Poly. It's laid back. I love where it is, being able to see the castle. Um, I love being able to have five people in a studio and having the two bathrooms. It just, um, it's, it's nice. All right. Fiasco. So uh, if money is no object and I can just swap my points for something else, I'm going to take the Grand Californian. And the reason being is here as a local here in Orlando, I'm never going to utilize that 11th month window for the resorts here. It's always going to be within the seven, if not like just planning something a few months in advance. So those points are gonna be just fine and dandy here. But what I absolutely will do is plan a trip out to Disneyland with that window. And I would definitely love staying at the Grand Californian, which you just can't do unless you own there pretty much with like a few exceptions. So I feel like I would just absolutely get like the most value, the most wiggle room out of owning there. So swap my points for that, absolutely. All right. Paul, what about you? I'm gonna use uh, Fiasco's same reasoning, but I'm gonna go a little bit further west and I'm gonna say Alani. Um, you know, with us planning to move down to Florida uh, within the next few months, we are gonna be in that same sort of predicament where, and, and it's also how we've always used our points, which is that we use them in that zero to seven month booking window. Like we're not, we're not booking crazy far out and we always like to hop around to different resorts. So those are not priorities for, for us. Um, so I'm, I, I would say Alani, you know, our trip, our trip out there really changed the way that I think about Disney Vacation Club and I can't wait to visit it again. So I'm headed to Alani. Amy, what do you think? Oh, I'm with Fiasco, Grand Cal all the way. Um, I, Alani, I think you can get into it seven months, especially, you know, the ocean views, uh, the points where the points are a little bit higher. Those don't go as fast. And, uh, we really love the resorts that we own, you know, Grand Floridian, but it is really kind of point heavy and we love boardwalk, but I don't want another 150 there because it expires in 2042. So Grand Cal, I've been dying to get in there and I just, I don't know if I ever will. So that's what I want. Interesting. Interesting. I'll tell you, um, initially, initially, uh, my first reaction was the same as yours, Copper Creek. Um, I own a Copper Creek. That's where I have my direct points, my tiny little direct contract that I mm -hmm. got just to get the blue card. Um, and I love it. I love, believe, and the cabins. It's mm -hmm. really yeah. the cabins. 
But the more I thought about it, I'm with Paul. And, uh, with Paul. I'll, uh, if I could, uh, I could only buy one place and only 150 points. I live here, right? I live in Florida. Um, and not for an 11 month booking window. Because if my contract, if my only contract is with Alani, then I'm gonna wanna stay there more, right? I'm, I'm gonna like feel like I need to use those points there, even though I don't have to. Um, and of any Disney resort I've ever stepped foot in, uh, whether it was in Japan or Paris or Orlando or California, I haven't been to the one uh, the ones in Shanghai. But of any of the ones I've stepped foot in, uh, Olani's it. Olani is it. Uh, from how it's architecture, it's it's. Uh, the authenticity of of the resort that Joe Rody put into that when he designed it, uh, so much so that it impressed the hell out of the local community. Um, and of course, the location of where it is it's God, I gotta go. <laughs> I'm sitting I was here. About to say, I was about to say, when are we going? Yeah, I've never been to Alani. So uh, I, I know. Get out. I, I know, right? To Alani? Are you, no, get out to Alani? I don't get out of the go go I sit know. in your car and think about what you've done. I know. Okay, I will because I agree. I, I've never been to Alani before. I know. And uh, I feel like I feel the same because the st I love the storytelling. And I love the storytelling, especially of Joe Rohde and of Disney. Yeah. And the and then the culture, the the Hawaiian culture combined with the Disney culture. I know I would love it. Well, I, I, I remember hearing the story that when the resort first opened and the uh, the people, the, the locals that they had assembled to uh, kind of consult with them mm -hmm. on the process came in to see it. Um, they said it was the most Hawaiian resort mm -hmm. they had mm -hmm. ever seen because of how much respect Disney yes, paid yep. to the culture. Right. And because that was the big fear when they announced, Disney announced they were going to do it. The locals didn't want it because they didn't want their culture, right. you know, bastardized by Disney. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, so there's, that has always impressed me, but it is just the general feeling mm -hmm. at Alani. Mm -hmm. There's something special. And, yeah. You want to talk about the best spa, the best spa, not just at any Disney resort. I've been to a lot of spas in a lot of places. Mm. Yeah. There's no, there's no match. Now I understand that the spa at the Grand Californian, which is undergoing mm -hmm. a renovation right now, is supposed to reopen mm -hmm. relatively soon, uh, is being done with that spa Ooh, as the model. Nice. That's great. So if somebody was telling me about it. Some one of the cast members out there was telling me uh, about it, and I'm like, "Look, you, 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 you might, you might take inspiration, but you are never, ever going to match no. that spa." Um, and so yeah, it is. There is just something about Alani. There is just something about Alani that I think phenomenal. All right. That we, got, we spent way too much time on that question. Um, Thanks for the show, everybody. Uh, yeah, we'll see right. you next time. <laughs> Let's see. Um, with Disney introducing the extended evening hours for deluxe resort guests and DVC owners, do you think there will be an effect on the price and value of DVC contracts? Would you expect to see an increase in cost per point because of that? Personally, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is a big enough perk mm -hmm. to yeah. drive up the yeah. price. Yeah. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah, no. Yep. Nope. No. Nope. Anyone disagree with that? No. I don't. I don't think it's going to drive up price. I think though that there might be a mindset of driving people towards membership involved in that because if you are if you are someone that historically stays at a moderate resort, 
then you're already in that price point where DVC could be valuable for you if you vacation every year or every couple years. So I just wonder, it's, it's one of these things that they're calling a perk where it's really, I, I don't really feel like it's a perk if you're a historic member, um, but I could see that on the surface for someone that is like a moderate level person that's staying at Coronado or Caribbean Beach regularly, then this does add a layer of, okay, maybe I buy DVC because I do get this added. It might drive more people to running DVC points. Um, you know what I mean? Because a yeah. lot of DVC mm -hmm. point rentals are more, you're paying more like moderate prices. So oh, I could rent DVC points now and have this deluxe perk. That, I could see that happening. Yeah. I hate when I do this. I forgot to do the uh, the plug at the beginning of this. As Amy is talking about the rentals, this show is brought to you by the world of DVC companies. That includes DVCResaleMarket.com to purchase a DVC resale contract, uh, DVCRentalStore.com, where you can rent out points, rent out your points if you're a member, try DVC before you buy it. Uh, and of course, MoneraFinancial.com, that will make it very, very easy for you to buy mm -hmm. a contract very quickly, mm -hmm. very, very quickly, <laughs> like that. Um, the barriers to entry with Monera make it very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, I, I had I, I, I kind of went off on this on a Tuesday show recently. Um, I the more I've thought about it, uh, the whole restriction on uh, extra magic hours for deluxe guests, I think is is awful. Um, I think it's an awful decision on Disney's part um, to treat guests in other Disney resorts as not quite as important as the ones who are staying in deluxe. Um, and there is absolutely no COVID explanation that justifies that, none. Mm -hmm. None. Um, COVID, it's COVID as cover is what that is. Um, but, I mean, it does add a nice perk. If you're the person that needs to be there at rope drop or wants to be there after hours, you know, um, it's a nice perk. But otherwise, I don't think it would ever drive, drive prices yeah. up. Um, another question, would there ever be an advantage to having different use years? I know all the disadvantages. Mm. It's a good question. Is there any advantage to it that um, you can think of? Not that I can see. Um, a lot of people get confused with use years thinking that they have to have their points in order to make a reservation. And they don't. They just have to have right. the points in their account the day of arrival. So some people feel if I don't have my points, I can't make a reservation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we help educate them to make sure that they understand that. So I don't really see having two or three different use years um, unless you vacation at certain times of the year every single year and you're going to continue to do that. Then you want a use year that's going to allow you, if you have to cancel that reservation, to still be able to bank your points. Right. See, and for me now, I did not listen to the advice that was given me when I started uh, uh, when I started buying contracts, and I have, I have February, March, all the months. probably just have all of them at this point. No, no, Fe I, think yeah. it's, I know February, March, and September um, are are the three that I have, um, and I don't know that this is a legitimate advantage. Maybe on a psychological level, um, it's kind of nice to log in. And all of a sudden, like on a particular, like the first of a month, and oh look, there's more points. <laughs> it's like the point fairy came and like dropped points off. But I mean, that's not a legitimate advantage. But you know, do you for have me, a little system of how to when to bank and and? Oh, inspired? oh, aren't you adorable? Okay. Thank that you. I ever, <laughs> I ever have the opportunity to bank. Um, True. I, uh, My saying. I, 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 I burn through those points yeah. like a hot knife through butter. Um, I've got what, like almost 2,000 points yeah. and it's not enough. And now again, I mm -hmm. use those when family mm -hmm. is in town. Yep. I yep. use that for these guys. Yep. Um, 
there's a lot of it's not just me um but it's also kind of like you know i i am definitely the guy if i have cash in my pocket it's going to burn a <laughs> hole and if i if i have points sitting i got to do something with them right i got to do something with them um but not you know really honestly i need like another five six hundred points <laughs> do you borrow your points peak um, I try not to, but yes. Oh, you're supposed to. Here's my philosophy. Always borrow your points from a year ahead. So when you die, you've taken next year's vacation before you died. Oh, <laughs> true. Or is it, isn't that uplifting? <laughs> isn't that uplifting? Monday's motivation was Sue. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year, this way, whoever gets the points, they have one less year, but you paid for it. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You figure I'll do that with the money, too. Spend it. Yep. before I die and then when I die like the people in my will like didn't leave me anything <laughs> okay. um, he said he would but there's nothing there now um, alright um, let's see pros and cons of having one large contract versus multiple smaller contracts mm. good one I like the well I had 620 points and um, I had several smaller contracts. And the reason why I did the smaller contracts is because I knew that if ever I didn't want to use all those points, it'd be an easier contract to sell and it would go for a higher price. Right. So that was nice. Also, if you have multiple people that you want to give contracts to in your will, it's easier to do it that way. Because if you give them a big contract, they all have to use it and play nice in the same sandbox. So I think you should make it like a, like a Hunger Games. Right, yeah. right. It's 400 points. Hide amongst yeah, yourselves. Really. Yeah. That's what I used to say, too, to, to a lot of my members, too, is to instead of doing the big 400 point, do maybe four 100 point. Yeah. Same resort, yep. same UCR. Keep it nice and simple. But then, right, for those purposes, it's just an easier way to, to divide it. Yep. Everybody's independent. Individual, though. Whatever, you know. Amy, only, what do you the think? Only real, yeah, the only real advantage to me, because we like having smaller ones, too, um, because we like diversifying our resorts, um, but you will pay less closing costs with, with one big contract as opposed to right. paying closing costs on multiple. But that, to me, that's really the only advantage. I'd rather split them up. I'd rather them be more valuable when I resell them. I'd rather mm -hmm. diversify the resorts they're from, um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have contracts of all sizes. Um, I think like my largest is 700. Wow. And then my smallest is 50, 75. Mm -hmm. um, just depends on, depends on like what, what level of psychotic break I was in <laughs> when I bought the contract, um, how, like where I was on the manic scale um, when I bought the contract. Um, because sadly, that really is how a lot of decisions get made for me. <laughs> um, all right, another question. Can you elaborate on the process of transferring points from one contract to another, and if it's something available only for direct contracts or resale as well? I've owned for three years and I'm still confused on the process. Also, would love to hear stories and tips on transferring DVC points to RCI and where people have stayed. Well, as a result of the last part of that question, we've actually decided we're gonna do a separate show um, on RCI in this batch that we're recording right now. So in the next week or two or three, however, I don't know, um, there'll be a, a show dedicated solely to RCI because Sue was uh, talking about it before we, we, we started recording this show and she had me wrapped. Um, and I'm like, I had no idea because you've apparently used mm -hmm. a, a lot of yep. your points for RCI. So. We're gonna have a, 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 an in-depth discussion on that in a future show. But uh, let's you know, talk about the process of transferring points from one contract to another. Who wants to take it? I'll take it. I can. Up. Oh. Oh, no, sorry, Paul, you were oh, too. Oh, let Paul take it. Paul was too slow. <laughs> let Paul take it. No, love, Paul, Paul talks all the time. Paul's <laughs> always on camera. This is, you're <laughs> new. I wanna to listen to Sue talk. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so in transferring points, and you can transfer the, the uh, rental DVC resale points as well uh, as regular points, but transferring from one account to another um, is done and 
you can transfer from my account to your account, Pete. I could transfer points once a year. And okay. if I have multiple accounts, you can give me points. <laughs> I know you'd love them. If I have multiple accounts myself, again, it's once per year, but they've been a little bit lenient on that. When you transfer points, you cannot transfer banked points, you can't transfer borrowed points, but you can bank the points once they're transferred. So if uh, okay. you have two contracts and you need to merge the points together, especially if they're two different resorts at seven months, you want to make a reservation, you transfer the points from one account to the next and then make your reservation. And this, I'm assuming, cannot be done on that antiquated no, online system. No, not on system. the online system. You, you have to call. does require the 14-hour phone call yes. to member services. Yes. Um, which hopefully, eventually, whatever COVID BS excuse they're using for that, will go away and they'll actually well, and, have more people. And if you want to take it, a, if you want to take it a step further, it, if you are transferring like member to member, so like between you and me, Pete, if we wanted to transfer points, you'd have to be on the phone. I'd have to be on the phone. Yep. Member services would have to be on the phone at the same time. Yep. So it, that just makes the situation even more of a nightmare in terms of like logistics and conference call and all that kind of fun stuff. So something else to mention is that transfer points maintain the use year and the resort that they mm -hmm. came from so if you let's say you buy resale into like the original 15 resort uh and you can't book at riviera you can get a riviera transfer um and you can use those points at riviera at the 11 month window uh just as the owner of that contract could. all right another question when will we get a DVC, well, when will DVC get an app? Oh, um, I know. It, it's 2021. Uh, well, yeah. it's 2021. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe, may, maybe when their website isn't 1999. Um, but I, I will tell you, uh, uh, DVC Resale Market has a phenomenal mm. app. Um, really, it's again they make it you guys really do you've done a very good job of making it very yeah. easy yeah. it's very user friendly yeah. if I can use it anybody can yep. use it that's me <laughs> <laughs> but you know barring that I I mean that's the app that I use mm -hmm. um, but yeah I, I don't know it's long I think it's long overdue mm -hmm. um, it, Technology with Disney, um, you know, being it with the company for as long as I was, that, that was a priority in the list of, yeah. of um, you know, sort of where the, the future of the company. And um, there's, it, it's a great question, and it's and it's the unknown and it's speculation, but it's it is long overdue, mm -hmm. and it would be fabulous. It would be such an, a great addition, you know. That's just um, it needs to it needs to happen. Yeah. yeah, it needs to happen. I also. I'd love to put to rest members. Members debate about a DVC app all the time, either in DVC fan or Disboards or something of that sort. But um, there's a there's a fear that the cost is going to be pushed off on us, the members, if they were to develop an app. But like, if you've ever, if you know the cost of app development, like it's going to cost each of us like fifty cents if they would create one. Mm -hmm. I I mean. I'd be willing to pay for a couple people. Okay, but here's my thing. Here's my thing. They can't get their website to work. I doubt seriously their app is going to be any better. But your point's well taken, and I agree. I think they should. It would be really nice if there was a DBC app that we could, you know, at least look at our points. Or certainly, I mean, can't book anything now without it. Without getting those damn dwarves showing up. <laughs> oh my God. It drives me insane. Yeah. I hate Snow not. White now just because of <laughs> But it'd uh, be nice when I have to log in every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. An app an app like takes out the having to log in right, right. every single time you do something. That'd be nice. Yeah. Right. No. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe uh Maybe for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe for Christmas they'll get you an app. Um, all right, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode of the DVC Show. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next Monday. Have a great week, and stay out of the damn lakes. I don't know why I'm saying that on these shows now, but stay out of the damn lakes. <laughs>